Welcome to Carl's Garden. Today we're going to be potting some geraniums. This is episode three. I'm Josh. And I'm Carl. I ask the questions. And I answer the questions. So in this episode, like I said, we're going to be potting some geraniums. And um, if you missed it, we did a quick tip on how to put some holes in the bottom of your container if it doesn't come with them. So check out that quick tip if you need to know how to do that. So where do we start? And uh, We'll just start talking a little bit about the geranium itself. It's a all-time favorite flower for many growers, many homeowners, gardeners alike. They serve many purpose in the garden. We're going to pot these up. We're putting them actually in a single container by themselves, and we're doing that on purpose so we can move them around, transport them with us to use on different segments and stuff like that. But uh, the palagoniums, that's what they normally are. They're not actually a geranium, but that's what we call them. To pick a good one, you want a good uniform plant. They have a disc, or not a discoloration, but they have a coloration darkness in that leaf, and that's what you really want to, to look for when you purchase one. The darker that center is, the better the plant is. And a geranium, they don't like to be wet. We like to, these are pretty dry now. We've done that on purpose so we can pot them without making too big of a mess. Uh, they like to dry out between waterings. They're fairly easy to take care of. These are zonal geraniums, which means they've been taken from a cutting and grown on. Your zonal geraniums will have bigger, nicer blooms on them. The seedling geraniums will be a much smaller bloom. So you can use them in different applications. Some people like seedlings. Most gardeners, that's true gardeners, love the zonal geraniums. So, so if we were potting these, like in the yard, would we do it kind of like the roses, where it's five to six hours of sunlight, or how much sunlight? They love they love as much sun as you can get them. They'll they'll grow good in shade, but on a geranium, if it's if it doesn't get enough sunlight, then you won't have the long stems and the blooms. And the way you fertilize them, actually our rose food that we had, if you remember back on the rose segment, uh, talking about the trimming and stuff, I said the rose food crosses over in some other plants. And this is one of the plants that it crosses over. The middle number is the highest number, and that's what it takes to make the geranium blooms. So, How much water? so this way we don't have to buy extra fertilizer. Not much water. Like I say, they, they like to dry out in between watering. You can actually see it when they wilt. Then you can, can give them water and they'll perk right back up. So they're, they're pretty stout, strong plant. They require a little bit of deadheading. This one's not too bad, but this actually this bloom is broke. So we'll just, some people take and cut them out. I've seen gardeners do that. I've seen them do it in street gardens where they have planters up and down like Main Street. They go in and just nip that out. Actually, that stem's going to die back down to the, to the main stem anyway. So the way you remove it, you just follow that stem down to where it connects, give it a little snap, it'll snap right out. So. Huh. And then any, while we're potting them up, we'll get rid of any leaves that's, that's dangling, that's been broke, you know, during transportation and the care that they've had at the nursery. So we'll, we'll do that. Any, any rough looking leaves, you kind of pinch those out. But every time you have a bloom that uh, it's looking faded, just follow that stem down and you can just give it a little snap usually away from the main stem and it'll just snap loose and we'll show you after these grow some there's a way once you get a big bloom head on the plant if the, they're bad about the center starting to to go out first we'll show you how to do that in a later episode but you can actually keep that bloom on there for a good bit good bit longer so have you got that one groomed up? It's got a couple of leaves on the bottom. I know, not a little full. 
not fully groomed. And they are excellent, excellent plants. You can use them in the landscape, you can use them in like this situation where we're just going to use a single plant so we can move them around. Be easy transportation that way. You can even move them on the patio if you're having a special occasion. They work extremely well in like half whiskey barrels. Um, in that application, usually you use three geraniums kind of in the center and then you can use trailing plants around the, the base of it that comes over the kind of hip hide the pot. So Cause that's we all a good, have a whiskey barrel laying around. Yeah, everybody does. <laughs> so that's Jack Daniels is better. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, when you're planting multiples of like geraniums or shrubs, roses, anything like that, especially in a container, you need multiples of odd numbers. Three to five, seven, that just makes it look better. So if you put three geraniums in like a whiskey barrel, then you might want to go with like five trailing plants around it. And that just adds to your numbers, makes it look a lot better. So, you got it groomed up? Yep. Looks pretty good. We've already put a little filler in the bottom on your bigger containers. Uh, some of your roots will go down in the very bottom of them, like whiskey barrels. We used to use a little bit of gravel in the bottom and then a little filler like shredded mulch or even pine bark. Then put your potting soil on top. So we've actually used just a small amount of filler in this pot to start off with. And then you just simply put your fingers around the stem, tip it up, dump it out, and you can see how dry it is. It hasn't hurt the plant in any form. So once we get it planted, then we'll, we'll pot it up. This one is not root bound. I will probably feather the roots just a little bit to give them a, a good start. So it goes out in the mix and doesn't stay in the in the root ball itself in circles. So. Now we need a little bit in the bottom. And for a dipping cup, you can make a cup out of out of any container that actually has a um, handle on it where you're just using a regular movie cup. Makes it simple, easy to use. Form. And we'll show fast you probably in another episode how to how to make a good one. Or a fast food cup or something like that. How much more you need? How about two more. There's one. We'll get one more and here. The, the potting soil we're using has a little bit of starter fertilizer in it, so we'll go ahead and and hit it with some of the rose food to give it a good bloom too. Is that gonna be enough? You need one more. I think that may do it. That's about perfect. Yep. And now if you'll start filling in around it. And you can tip the bag up and pour it in. That's that's fine too. And the best thing I can tell you on potting soil for indoor or outdoor is just seek some good ones out try them see what works the best for you oftentimes I I find a good um, potting soil on the market and oftentimes it disappears they pull it from the market for some reason or another or the company goes out of business or, or whatever but just seek out a good potting soil Whatever works for your location and your watering situation, just stay with it because a lot of them have uh, what we call forest products in it, which is usually pine bark or mulch or something like that, and peat moss, starter fertilizer. Do I get extra points because I'm actually working on Yeah, you're one? working. <laughs> you should have helped me on the rows too. So. Shovel faster, shovel faster. How many more you need? Three or four more. Three or four? Yeah. All right. And you want to just firm it in. You don't have to get, you know, use a monkey grip to push it down. You just want to firm it in a good bit. 
just so it doesn't settle. We're getting close to the right amount. And like I say, we'll use these for to move around on some of the sets and where we're filming and stuff and use them for backdrops and make them as portable as you can make them. And I will give you one hint. That's pretty much all we need, Josh. Uh, your larger containers, we were talking about the whiskey barrels. I'll firm this over so we get it situated just like we want it. Things like the whiskey barrels, where they're heavy, you can still make those portable by using a simple hand truck. Just tip the edge of it up, put the hand truck under it, and then tip it over, and you can transport those things wherever you want them. Put them around the swimming pool, patio, or whatever. So Now that we've got it to right height and level, we'll use just a simple small amount of the, uh, of the rose food around it. Like I say, the, the uh, potting soil has a little bit of starter fertilizer in it, so that'll help it a little bit. So we're gonna sprinkle uh, maybe two tablespoons of the rose food around it. And I'll probably come back in later after these grow for a week or 10 days and then start using the liquid fertilizer in on top of them. That'll, that'll give them a good flush, but we don't want them to to grow real fast, we want them to stay compact, and bushy. They need a lot of sun, and we want as many blooms on those plants as we can get. So, you have anything to add? Nope, we're gonna get this other one potted up real quick, and we'll be back in just a minute. That's a good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So while uh, Carl's getting this one fertilized, we got both of them potted up now. Um, take a moment check out carlsgarden.tv for our other episodes and quick tips these look pretty good not bad not bad i'm gonna add some water to them before we get done here yeah and one trick that that i like to use uh, you can use a journal i usually use just a spiral bound notebook that i keep with me i'll write dates down planted uh, the pink piece rose such and such date just make a notation. It doesn't have to be in doesn't have to be in any kind of order, just so you can look back and say, well, you know, that rose has been out three years. We'll go ahead and record the date. Just on this one, we'll just record it in an open spot on the tag, stick it in the plant, and then we can look back. Those have been potted up, you know, four weeks, eight weeks, two months. So that's that's one thing to keep in mind. Use a journal, make notes on your tags if you can. So we'll go ahead and get them watered in and we'll go from there. All right, that's good. And like I say, geraniums like to be dry. These were pretty dry and you see they're still in pretty good shape without, without dying. They can be wilted down. You can give them a good drink and they'll, they'll perk back up. Right. That's one thing that makes geraniums pretty good in the landscape too because they don't require a lot of watering. They do require to, you know, for you to deadhead occasionally, but, but they're excellent plants. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure to like and comment, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Hopefully you'll enjoy it.